Hi folks, welcome back to another episode of Washing Dishes. Today, we're going to be continuing our chicken series and talking about chicken breasts. We're going to be making a chicken sandwich and a chicken salad. I'm going to show you how to butterfly and saute a chicken breast, and then we'll build our dinner. Stick around, see how it turns out. Now that it's time to work with some raw chicken, I've donned the gloves, I've got a copious amount of paper towels, and I have my trash can open already. So, this is one of our chicken breasts from last week. This one was preserved using a vacuum bag in the freezer. Um, I happen to have a vacuum sealer. Vacuum sealers are really nice. They do a good job keeping everything nice and protected, stop you from getting freezer burn. They can get a little pricey, but you can usually find pretty good ones uh, on sale for somewhere in the 40 to 60 range. Um, we're just going to cut open the bag. You can see the skin got a little scrunched up, but it's no big deal. We're just going to pat it dry because, again, we're going to be doing butchery, so we want everything we're working with to be as dry as possible. Since we are going to be using this as boneless, skinless chicken breast, I'm just going to pull the skin off. I've got a little plan of for something to do with it in a bit. You'll see how that goes. Uh, but for now, we're just going to set it aside. Now that we've got this on a clean board, nice and dry, we're going to go ahead and take our knife, hold it sideways, and we want to come in at about the midpoint of the chicken breast. And as you can see, or as you will see in a moment, when we're doing this, it's very important that we keep our hand flat on the chicken, but with our fingers pointed up. And as we come through, we're just going to make nice, slow, smooth strokes. And we're trying to keep the knife in the very middle of the chicken because we want this to come out as evenly as possible. It's important that we keep the knife flat because we don't want it to get all wobbly as we come across. It wouldn't cook evenly if we did. And as you can see, nice and even. Uh, the one on the your left is a little bit thinner, but that's not going to be an issue. We're going to cut the one on the right in half for the and double stack it for the chicken sandwich and then we'll use the one on the left for the chicken breasts or for the chicken salad i've mentioned before that chicken breasts have a tendency to get dry and one of the ways you can avoid them drying out is by using a brine so that's what we're going to do before we cook them we're going to let them brine for about 30 minutes you wouldn't want to let them go more than a couple hours because this brine is primarily pickle juice and the acid will start to break down the chicken and make it kind of mealy and gross. So the kernels got 11 herbs and spices. I'm only going to use five. Well, six if you count the one that you can just barely see off the side. Uh, we're going to use some mustard, some garlic powder, some onion powder, some oregano, some paprika, and a little bit of good old-fashioned MSG. We're going to do about a teaspoon of mustard or so about a tablespoon of paprika. We don't want too much because we don't want it to turn like pinkish, uh, but we do want some of that smoky flavor in there. <clears throat> about a teaspoon or so of garlic powder, maybe a little bit more, and then about the same amount of onion powder, about a teaspoon, because this is just for one chicken breast. Obviously, if you were doing a larger quantity, you would do more spices and whatnot. And then for the oregano, we're gonna do about a tablespoon. Uh, but we're going to kind of crush it in the palm of our hands just to kind of break it up and then the flavor will extract a little bit better into the, the, into the brine and into the chicken. And then last but not least, we're going to add a teaspoon of MSG. There has been a lot of talk about MSG. Um, you can look it up online. Bottom line, most people, it's just fine. Some people are extremely sensitive to it. Um, but a lot of the panic about it was born out of racism, unfortunately. So we're just going to mix this up a little bit to kind of get the f everything in there. And then I'm going to wrap it up and pop it in the fridge for about 30 to 45 minutes. With the chicken in the fridge, a clean cutting board, and a clean knife, let's talk about what else we're putting on the sandwich. I grabbed some Swiss cheese. Melts nicely. Good flavor. You can use any cheese you like, but uh, you just want something that melts well. We're going to use some spinach and arugula here. You could use romaine or some kind of other lettuce. I just like these because I happen to like the way they taste and I really think they add a really nice texture. 
No sandwich would be complete without pickles, onions, and tomato. We're going to use my own personal brand of pickles. If you make some yourself, let me know how they come out. If you buy some, that'll work just fine. We're going to use, slice up a tomato and use uh, about half of a red onion or so. And you want to slice the tomatoes, like, not super thick, but, you know, enough that they've got some texture in there. I'm going to lay these out on a plate, and it's very, 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 very important that if you're going to put tomatoes on a sandwich, that you salt those tomatoes and let them sit for a little bit. It amps up the flavor significantly, and it's you're wasting flavor if you don't do it. The next thing we're going to do is slice up our onion. I'm just going to do a quick uh, Lyonnaise cut. It's a radial cut. You kind of you just nip off the stem and the root, peel it up, and then you uh, cut starting at an angle and you just kind of follow the angle of the onion along as you go there's kind of lines drawn along the top of the onion if you you know look at it you can kind of just cut along those lines i'm going to go super duper thin on this um because it looks really impressive and because i like my onions on my sandwiches to be very thin all right so now that we've got the onions sliced up we will just kind of break them up a little bit and then pop them in the bowl um, if you want to mellow out the flavor of your red onions or even white onions, but especially red, cause they go on a lot of raw preparations, you can put them in a bowl and put like a strainer or a, like a screen or a oven rack on top and just run them under cold water for like five to 10 minutes. It'll kind of rinse off a lot of the like sharper, more bitter uh, flavor compounds and it'll mellow them out really nice. Now that we've made it over to the stove, I've got enough oil to coat the bottom of a pan heating up over high heat. I'm going to let that heat up until it is shimmery and smoking or almost smoking, I should say. Once it is, I'm going to go ahead and lay the chicken in away from me. It's important that we lay the chicken breasts into the pan away from us because there's a lot of hot oil in there. And if any of it splashes or splatters, we want it to not splatter onto us. And of course, I've patted these dry and after I pulled them out of the brine. There's still going to be a fair amount of splattering. So just be mindful of that. It's a, it's a thing. Now, it's incredibly important after you put a piece of especially chicken into a pan that you not mess it around. You've got to just let it go and let it sit. It's going to seem like it's sticking at first, but if you just be patient and let the oil and the heat and the chicken do their thing, it's going to stick for a little bit and then it'll get a nice sear on it and it'll release no problem. As you can see, these are definitely at that sticking stage. So we want to let them go for a little bit longer and just have some patience. There's always a big urge to move stuff around and that hear it sizzle, but you've got to resist that urge and give it time to do its thing. Now that these have been sitting for a while, we're going to give them a check. This one moves around pretty nice and easy. And as you can see, it's starting to get a really pretty, really beautiful sear. That one, again, moves around nice and easy. Sears not quite as good, but we're going to turn it over so that it cooks more evenly. That one was a little stuck, came up nice and easy, no problemo. And now we're just going to let these go on this other side for another probably about four to six minutes. Overall, these are probably going to take somewhere between eight and 12 minutes to cook, just depending on how hot your pan is and that sort of thing. I have these over like a medium, medium high heat because I'm going to be standing here paying attention to them the whole time. If you're going to have to be distracted, you probably want them over a lower heat, which will of course make them take a little bit longer to cook. The best way to know when your meat is done is to use a thermometer. And we're going to look here the thermometer is upside down for y'all. I can't really get it on camera, but uh, these are at about 135 degrees. So they're going to need another probably three to four minutes in the pan. These are almost ready to come out of the pan. I've got a plate ready to put them on to rest. We're looking for an internal temperature uh, above 160. But if we got it over 170, we are in serious trouble. So... One last flip just to make sure everything's got good color. Little teensy tiny bit of sticking. I think we're going to be okay with that. 
And yeah, let's check that temp. One fifty nine. I'm going to go ahead and call that good. We're going to let these rest on the plate for about 10 minutes uh, just while we get everything else set up and also while we cook our crispy chicken skin. All right, so there's enough residual oil in the pan for our chicken skin. We're just going to kind of stretch it out and then again, very importantly, lay it into the pan away from us. This is going to sizzle and pop like crazy, as you can see, and it's important that we not get splattered. So this is, we're just going to fry this up, uh, let the fat in it cook down and render, and let the skin crisp up and be delicious. You may need to kind of hold it down while it cooks a little bit. That's what I'm doing with the tongs here. Uh, you just want to make sure you get nice kind of contact with the pan the whole time. We've got our chicken breast. They've rested for about 10 minutes. So we're gonna build the salad first. I've got my greens. I'm gonna add some sliced cucumbers, some of our thin sliced red onion, and I'm gonna dice up one of these tomato slices. Actually two. All of this goes in the bowl. And we'll add some avocado. I think I'm gonna do about a quarter, so we'll cut this half in half. Keep this for the sandwich. And then I'm just going to cut across, trying not to go through the skin, and then the other way. And then we'll just use this offset spatula. This should all go right into the bowl. That's not what I meant. And now this is the lime yogurt sauce that you may remember from the Chana Marsala video. I'm going to use that as the dressing for this salad. So we're just going to give this a little gentle toss, starting from the bottom and lifting through. Let's get our salad in the bowl and then we'll slice up our chicken. So when you're plating salad, you want to get as much height as possible. So I kind of do it in a few steps. I'll make a nice pile in the middle and that's going to be mostly the greens and stuff. And then the next one I'll set gently on top and kind of let it fall out. And then I'll repeat that again. And then the last handful tends to be mostly toppings. So again, we just want to gently drop those in so that we have a nice mixture of greens and mix-ins. We'll lose the glove, because our chicken is cooked. And with the chicken breast, you just want to make nice cuts, nice thin pieces. You don't want them to be too chunky, you want them to kind of blend into the salad, but provide a nice flavor and texture. There we go. With our chicken all sliced up, we'll do the restaurant thing and stack it on top. And we'll slice our chicken, crispy chicken skin, nice as thin as we can get it. And we don't need all of this, we'll just sprinkle a little bit of it on top. Here's our chicken salad. I'm going to clean up the board and then we'll put together our sandwich. To make our sandwich, the first thing we need is a toasted bun. I was going to make my own buns, but I'm not going to front. I screwed up. Uh, my personal recommendation would be Joshua Wiseman's Best Burger Buns. Uh, link in the description. Uh, these buns are uh, Martin's potato buns. I got them from Wise Ox, which is a wonderful uh, butchery in North Park down here in San Diego. If you're in town, strongly recommend. Let's build the sandwich. So, this is some homemade mayo from a previous video. I've added all of the seasonings that were in the brine. I'm just going to spread that pretty, like a nice thick layer on the bottom. You want to make sure you get it on the entire sandwich, all the way to the edges. And I've got some Dijon mustard, which I always have loved. We'll add that and give that the good spread. Now that we've got sauce on both sides of our sandwich, it's important to think about how you build it because we don't want too much moisture getting into the bread. So I'm gonna put down a nice layer of greens, some onions, and then one of our half of a chicken breast. I'm going to add some cheese. You could melt the cheese beforehand under the broiler. I'm, I've got a kitchen torch, so I'm going to use that. Now that our cheese is gooey and a little sticky, I'm going to add my beautiful salted tomato, my other chicken breast, another layer of cheese. Then we'll add our pickles. You can never have too many pickles. And our avocado. And with everything together, 
go ahead and pop the lid on. That is a gorgeous looking sandwich. Oof. Um, social media, Patreon, Twitch channel. I'm live probably right now. Twitch.tv slash washing the wind. Come hang out while I play video games. 